O God, who in the heart of thy Son, wounded by our sins, dost mercifully vouchsafe to bestow upon us the infinite wealth of thy love. Words taken from this morning's collect for the solemn feast, first class, the most sacred heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pope Pius XII, in his encyclical on the Sacred Heart, explained that devotion to the Sacred Heart is not optional, but rather fundamental and even necessary to the Catholic faith. He said, The honor to be paid to the Sacred Heart is such as to raise it to the rank, so far as external practice is concerned, of the highest expression of Christian piety. We cannot reach the heart of God save through the heart of Christ. Again, we cannot reach the heart of God save through the heart of Christ. As he himself says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father save by me. Pope Pius XII, thank you. Now in speaking of devotion to the heart of Jesus, Pope Pius asks, Is it possible that there is any service of God more obligatory and necessary and at the same time more excellent and attractive than the one which is dedicated to love. Now in the litany of the sacred heart, we call his heart the abyss of all virtues and in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and source of all consolation. Notice the universal nature of these invocations. It is as if all depends on the heart of Jesus, and so it does. Now, why is this? Well, sin is in the will, and we know that the heart is the home of the will. Since this is where sin is committed, we know that the heart of man is the most damaged of his parts, the most in need of healing. Thus the prophet Jeremiah says, What is more torturous than the human heart? Who can understand it? Our blessed Lord himself said, What comes out of the man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of these evil things come from within and they defile a man. We strike the breast at the confitior and we say the words through my fault, mea culpa. Or when we want to acknowledge a fault, we strike our breast, mea culpa, mea culpa, my fault. That's where we strike the breast. That's where sin is committed. Also, we pray little prayers like, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. All is focused upon the heart. The desert fathers held the goal of the spiritual life to be purity of heart. They were experts in the spiritual life. They prized this purity of heart above all things and held that it included everything necessary to be a saint. If then God is going to save man, what part of man must God unite to himself more than any other but the heart? Maybe this is why we have the saying, let's get to the heart of the matter. Well, God did get to the heart of the matter by creating the sacred heart in the womb of the Virgin Mary, forming it from the most pure blood of her immaculate heart by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, it should come as no surprise that when various Eucharistic miracles are examined, they are found to be of heart muscle. And we know that the church herself was born from the pierced heart of Christ that we heard in the gospel this morning. How good then it is to be Catholic, to know that God took to himself a human heart, so that we might approach his heart in the Mass, in the sacraments, and receive the cure for our hardened and desperate hearts. Without the heart of Christ, 
we would be surely be lost, remain unhealed and unable to love. We would have no virtue, nor treasures of wisdom and knowledge, nor consolation. Now, there's another reason why this is important. It's well documented that under communism, criminals were often allowed much leeway. They always used the criminals to their benefit. They allowed the criminals to control the prison camps and the transport trains. Now, why is this? Well, first of all, because Stalin himself began his career as a criminal. First of all, Stalin was in the Russian Orthodox Seminary. He read the books of Darwin and said, there is no God, they've lied to us. And he left the seminary to become a great tyrant. Tells you the power of evolution, dangerous stuff. It's behind atheism. But he became a bank robber and a criminal after leaving the Russian Orthodox Seminary. But why allow these criminals such latitude? Because crime deadens the conscience. It hardens the heart in man. And this, in turn, enables him to do bad things easily. When this behavior is given some latitude, some leeway, fear rises among the people. Who wants to live among a bunch of criminals? We become afraid. Communists wanted fear to be always present. They wanted people to be afraid. As St. Aloysius says, the devil loves to fish in troubled waters. You can get people to do all sorts of things under the influence of fear. This is why we allow criminals to go out into the society, maybe, huh? Why is that criminal allowed to come out into the world when he knows he's going to commit more crime? Because we want fear to rise up in the people so that we can then take advantage of that fear. That's how the communists think. Why are they legalizing perversions? Once again, they want these people to act in a criminal way and then that fear will rise whenever you live among criminals. People committing crimes increases fear. People do things under the influence of fear. All sorts of strange things. Fear is a bad motivator. Look behind all the actions of your life that you regret and you'll often find that you were afraid of something. That's what made you do it in some sense. It makes us suspicious, always thinking the worst of our neighbor. It makes families and societies break down. It makes them submit to tyranny and to tyrants. Now the answer to this is not to harden our heart toward our neighbor and give way to suspicion stockpile guns, maybe, huh? But to turn all the more to the sacred heart of Jesus, our hope and consolation, our source of courage and strength. And there we find the love of God, the love of God that is able to cast out fear. The love of God that enables us to die a glorious and victorious death The love of God that enables us to become a victim for sinners so that they'll be converted. What's one of the promises of the Sacred Heart to Margaret Mary? I will be their secure refuge during life and above all in death. There it is. That's why we need the Sacred Heart. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.